There are seducing spirits and, and doctrines of devils that are operating, but it's been a year of extremes. Books have been put out. All kinds of things have been put out. People have been preaching it. You know, about money. I mean, even there's a doctrine out now that you don't have to tithe the local church anymore. Excuse me. And I know you didn't want me to say that. But that's not true. That's, what my, that's not what my spiritual fathers taught me. If it's not for the local church, there would be no body of Christ. The local church is our place that we gather together. And when you break down the foundation of the church by taking the operation capital money from it and sowing seed into it and put it into other places and the church collapses, then the whole body of Christ is going to be split and devastated and will be scattered as sheep without a shepherd. We need the local church. We need the local pastor. And you support your local church. You support your pastor. I'm coming back there. I said, but that's the truth to do. <clears throat> because there are extreme things. Now, Dad Hagen corrected some of those that are teaching this today before he left this planet more than once. I was there. I heard it with my own ears. And in one particular meeting, I wasn't there. But I was blessed to get the private five-hour teaching that he gave them on it to correct them. He said this, that the reason that he was having that meeting about finances, he said, the reason I'm having this, he said, because in the voice of healing days, what caused the power of God to wane and that move to stop is that people became more conscious of money and became money hungry than they did about the things of God. And he said, when people get money conscious, he said, when Jesus appeared to me, September the 2nd, 1950, you remember in Rockwall, Texas, he was in a tent meeting there. And, and it had rained that day, a gentle soaking rain. And the tent was uh, put up out kind of in the country, you know, where there's, I assume, dirt roads, because he said people couldn't get around, you know, like we do today in 1950. And so they only had about 40 or 45 people underneath the tent. So he a, taught a good Bible lesson, because everybody there was Christians. And then he invited everyone to come to the front and pray. And so everybody came down to the front and prayed, tried to find them a dry place, you know, underneath the tent. And he knelt down on the platform by a folding chair that was there, and they began to pray. While he was praying... He heard these words, come up hither, come up hither. Well, they had been some boys. Now, you have to listen to archive recordings to get all of this. You know what I mean? Because sometimes he didn't say all of these things in these meetings when you were there. But we've been able to get into some of these archive things and get them. But he thought there was some boys when he first heard that that was playing outside the tent. And they'd been out there throwing rocks, making fun of them. You know how boys would do, you know, and just being cantankerous. And he thought that the boys, he thought everybody in the tent heard it, you know. Come up hither because it was so real to him. And so he thought, well, why don't somebody deal with them guys? Why don't the ushers go out there and do something to them little boys out there? They're probably out here just making fun of us. And then he heard it again. Come up hither. Come up hither to the throne of God. And he said he looked up from where he was kneeling down by that chair praying, and he looked up where the top of the tent would be, and the tent disappeared, and there stood Jesus. And Jesus said, come up to the throne of God. At this time, Dr. Kenneth E. Hagin was 33 years old. Also, at this time, he didn't know a lot of things that had happened at his birth because his mama never told him. But he found those things out in this visitation. It was the first visitation of the Lord to Dr. Kenneth e. Hagin, where he saw him face to face. They were caught up in heaven, and Brother Hagin was told about his ministry, what he was called to do, and what his name should have been, and we're not going into all that now, but his name should have been, and uh, what his anointing would be in this earth. And then he said, as the Lord turned to walk away, he stopped and turned back around. And he said this, the reason I got into the story, is because in this uh, archive recording that I was, was able to be blessed to get, we have talking to these ministers, uh, he was talking about where Jesus stopped. He turned to walk away, Jesus stopped, turned around, and he said this to him. He said, be careful about money. He said, be careful about money. Now say, your brother Randy, are you against money? No. I'm like Jimmy. I'll take all you can give me. 
You know what I mean? I, I'm for prosperity. I believe God wants us to prosper. But the problem arises when you get things out of balance. What I mean by out of balance, you get more money conscious than you do God conscious. You know, in our meetings, if you've been around here, we don't make a big pull for money or anything, even though money's a, a necessity for us to operate, put on meetings like this, uh, and go and reach the people with the gospel. But that's not our main goal. That's not why we're here. Our main goal is to get the gospel out and spread the anointing and do some other things that I can't tell you now. But there's a reason that we're right here. There's a reason I'm here in Branson, Missouri. I just didn't open my mind up one day and said, I'm going to Branson, Missouri. I was told to come here, and this is what the Lord said to me. He said, and I'll tell you this much. He said, the geographical location is important. Sometimes it's not. And not all the time is the geographical location important. But sometimes it is. Said, you got chapter and verse for that? I knew y'all was in word folks. Oh boy. Them word folks. Remember Abraham? He lived way over yonder. He said, Abraham, pack your bag, get over yonder, and go over yonder. Isn't that right? Sometimes the geographical location is important. In fact, God spoke to Abraham at Alon Murray at the oak tree. I have been to that oak tree. I have stood there at an oak tree. Who stood at an oak tree? Who stood on the side of that mountain? You didn't think about jumping off this just a minute. <laughs> but it's high up there. And you see the mountain of blessing and the mountain of cursing that's over there in Israel. But I've been right there where God, but he had to go there to that place, leave his hometown and go there. And God spoke to him and appeared to him at Alon Moray, which is the oak tree, if you go back and read it. But it's a, the, I call it Alon Moray. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. All y'all folks may, may know how to pronounce it. But anyway, I've been to that place, but the geographical location sometimes is important. So the reason that we're here in our ministry right now is because the Lord said the geographical location is important. Why is that? I can't say. Because you can't say everything. I used to say everything. Remember, I talked about that last night. But then you get in trouble. But there is a reason. We're dealing with some things, not only here, you, you know, you hear me talking to the natural, and we're not going to get goofy here, don't, you know, just, just hang on, I don't think. <laughs> you know, and we're not going to get goofy. But sometimes in meetings, you know, you, you, there's more to it going on. Things are being affected in the realm of the spirit that people don't readily see in the physical world. And that's why we're here. There's things that must be corrected in the realm of the Spirit. And that's why we're here. That's why we're here. The Holy Ghost said, be here. Now, it's not me correcting them. I can't do anything. But it's the Lord doing things, and sometimes geographical locations are important. So if God tells you to pack your two-hump camel, I would think the two-hump was better than the one-hump. Because the one-hump, you sit on the mountain, you got to hang on. But the one you could sit down in the valley, at least you got a comfortable place. <laughs> so if he says for you to pack your two hump camel and get yourself up and get yourself to another geographical location, then you do that. 